All right, team, welcome back to Learn Neuroradiology. I'm Brent Weinberg. We're at it again for Fast 10 Neuroradiology Review Cases. This is part four, cases 31 through 40. So here we have a 46-year-old man with pain and right-sided radiculopathy. We have two images through the lumbar spine, T1 and a T2, axial images. The choices are angiomyolipoma, arachnoid cyst, Guillain-Barre and renal cell carcinoma. This is an example of a renal cell carcinoma. So the point here is that if you see something that looks like a spine, don't be fooled. If you see something off the field of view, don't think it's relevant to spine imaging. This is a case of a primary tumor in an adjacent structure, which is the right kidney here. You see this thing is pretty irregular, dark on T1, heterogeneous on T2. It's pretty concerning. So you definitely want to be concerned about that. It's probably not an angiomyolipoma because there's nothing here to suggest that it contains fat and you should be worried that it's a malignancy. So this patient needs a workup for renal cell carcinoma. Case 32 here is a 50 year old from Indonesia, back and abdominal pain. Got two images here, SAG T2, SAG post contrast. Your choices are pyogenic discitis, tuberculous discitis, lymphoma, and chordoma. So maybe it's a little bit of a clue that the patient's from a place that has endemic tuberculosis. This is a case of tuberculous discitis osteomyelitis. In this case, what you see is you've got abnormal T2 signal involving the vertebral bodies of several adjacent vertebral body segments, but you have relative sparing of the disc spaces. So the discs are not overtly destroyed. Similarly, on the enhancing, you've got uh, abnormal enhancement here, relative sparing of the discs. You've got a little bit of fluid anterior to the vertebral bodies as well, and some epidural enhancement there. Uh, so if you see uh, someone who has risk factors for TB, you see infection sparing the disc spaces, then you might think about tuberculous disease. You want to look at other sites uh, where there may potentially be disease, the lungs, the abdomen, the brain. Case 33 is a 31 year old with back pain and paresthesias. Here you have a CT sagittal through the thoracic spine and a single MR image through the cervical thoracic junction. It's a little bit hard to tell, but this is a post contrast T1 weighted image. Your choices are neurofibroma, aneurysmal bone cyst, chondrosarcoma, or osteosarcoma. Now, the major clue you have here is that you're dealing with a destructive mass. That probably means it's going to be one of these two, one of the sarcomas. Uh, here, the pattern of bone formation. So you've got new bone formation. It's cloud-like. This is more of an osteoid pattern of new bone a uh, chondroid matrix tends to be arcs and rings, which is not what you're seeing here. On the MR, again, you've got a destructive mass, destruction of the adjacent bone, a lot of enhancement. This uh, intrinsically T1 hyperintense stuff in the middle is that kind of dense matrix that's from the new bone. So you've got a destructive mass forming bone. That's probably an osteosarcoma. These are aggressive tumors. Not that many of them occur in the spine, but if you do see them, uh, then think about osteosarcoma. All right, case 34 is a 60-year-old with right-sided weakness. You have some perfusion color maps from a CT perfusion study uh, because it can be hard to tell what they are. They have to be labeled. This is the CBV up here, the CBF or blood flow, the MTT or mean transit time, and the Tmax. You have an abnormality here. The question is about what is causing that abnormality. Is it a completed infarct? Is it ischemic penumbra? Is it a hemiplegic migraine? Or is it a seizure? Uh, so this is a case of predominantly ischemic penumbra. What you have is you have an abnormality in a vascular territorial distribution. So you see this is involving the posterior aspect of the MCA distribution. That makes it more likely that you're dealing with a vascular anomaly. Now you see there's relative preservation of the CBV. The cerebral blood flow is probably slightly diminished, but relatively preserved, but the MTT and Tmax are markedly elevated. So when you have time changes that are not quite matched by CBF and CBV, you're probably dealing with penumbra. And when you have a completed infarct, you'll see more uh, decrease in the CBV and more marked decrease in the CBF. Now, uh, hemiplegic migraine can have a different appearance, but usually won't follow a vascular distribution. Case number 35 is a 40 year old 
fell four stories now with lower extremity paralysis. What is the complication that you see here? So uh, this is a trauma patient, got a sagittal T2 image here, axial T1 image. You have a CSF leak, an epidural hematoma, an epidural abscess, or epidural lipomatosis. So this is a trauma patient. They've got fractures of some of the thoracic vertebral bodies. But in addition to those fractures, what you can see is there's a collection dorsal to the fecal sac that is hyperintense on T1, a sort of heterogeneous on T2 with some thickening displacing the cord anteriorly. This is a fat saturated image, so you're not dealing with lipomatosis. In the setting of a trauma, this is much more likely to be an epidural hematoma. Now, this is one of the most common things that's missed by residents, and so it can be hard to diagnose, so you have to have a high suspicion for that. It can be it can mimic CSF flow voids, such as it does in this case a little bit. So you want to be looking at that on both T1 and T2 images, and uh, it can appear different based on the timing of blood. So just be sure that you're on the lookout for those in trauma patients. Case number 36 is a 56-year-old woman with back pain. Got two post contrast images a sagittal image of the thoracic spine and an axial post contrast image of the thoracic spine. Both of them, in this case, have fat saturation. So, here you're dealing with a case of a meningioma. If you look, there's a well defined mass in the ventral aspect of the fecal sac. It has a broad dural attachment, it's sort of rounded, and it's extra medullary because you see it's displacing the spinal cord posteriorly. On the axials, it's taking up most of the spinal canal. You can't really tell, but the, the spinal cord is displaced back here. So you have an extra medullary intradural mass. Your differential is really schwannoma, a met, and meningioma. But this seems relatively well behaved. Okay, no destruction of the adjacent structures. Doesn't involve the neural foramina, so it's most likely to be a meningioma. All right, case 37 is a 40 year old man with a severe headache, normal CTA. So I'm telling you, I'm not showing you the CTA, but I'm telling you it's normal here. Uh, your choices are chordoma, metastatic disease, aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, or non aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhages. The two CT images. So the answer in this case is non aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage. What you have is you've got blood products. Uh, ventral to the pons here. Uh, so again, here you see it on this image as well. Um, you know that the CTA is normal, so we don't have an AVM. We probably don't have an aneurysm unless it's thrombosed. Uh, this is a common location for what's called benign perimesencephalic hemorrhage. It's called benign because it's a little bit less of a negative prognosis than aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage, and this is a common location. Now, the etiology of this is not known, but it's believed to be due to venous hemorrhage, and uh, it has a pretty good prognosis. Uh, it often will respond uh, spontaneously, but these patients have to have aneurysm excluded. That will often mean multiple CTAs and often a catheter angiogram, just to exclude that there's not an underlying abnormality. All right, we're getting towards the end here. Case number 38 is a 40 year old woman who has headache when straining. Got a single T2 image through the midbrain. Your possible answer choices are Lumet Duclos syndrome, intracranial hypertension, intracranial hypotension, or Chiari malformation. So the answer here is Chiari malformation. And you want to be a little careful about these cases. What you have here is low-lying tonsils, which are peg-like or wedge-like here. You see they're shaped like a triangle. They're too low. They come all the way down to the arch of C1. If this distance uh, under the frame and magnum is more than about five or six millimeters, that's probably abnormal. Now, when you see low-lying tonsils, they can be caused by pressure abnormalities. So the next thing you should look at should be the pituitary. And in this case, the pituitary is normal. If you have high pressure, you're likely to see an expanded cella with a flattened pituitary along the base, the so-called empty cella. If you have low pressure, you're likely to see an expanded pituitary uh, that has vascular engorgement. You may also see the mammillary bodies are sagging, a decreased pontomammillary distance here uh, if you have low pressure. They don't have that. They have a history that's good for Chiari malformation. So this is a case of Chiari malformation. Case number 39 is a 58 year old that has undergone trauma. Here you have some images from an axial CT through the C1 vertebral body. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what this is until you know the answer, but it's an MR image. So your choices are carotid injury, vertebral injury, fat embolus, 
or epidural hematoma. Now the injury here is to the vertebral artery. What you have here is a fracture of the C1 vertebral body. This is a fracture of the both anterior and posterior ring or Jefferson fracture. Uh, what you also have though, is this is a fat saturated T1 weighted image through the neck. So you see the fat is suppressed. There's not much that's bright, but what you see is bright signal in the region of the left vertebral artery. If you look at this, this is an image from a contrast enhanced CT or CTA. There's no um, contrast in the left vertebral artery here. And this is met hemoglobin in acute uh, thrombus here, essentially. And that's from an acute uh, arterial vertebral injury. This is similar to what you might see on dissection. Under dissection, you'll see this in a curvilinear fashion around the wall of the vessel. Now, case 40 is a little bit different. This is an anatomy question. We've got six structures labeled here on a coronal flare image through the brain. I want you to tell me which of these is the fusiform gyrus. Take a look at that. Think about that for a second. So low hanging fruit anatomy questions like this are relatively common. So you want to know your common anatomy uh, for the ABR exam and for any of your uh, board exams. Uh, in this case, I'm going to show you the structures by name here. This is the superior temporal gyrus. This is the middle temporal gyrus, and this is the inferior temporal gyrus. So this is uh, named just the same way as the frontal gyri. Uh, this one right here is your answer. That's the fusiform gyrus. This one, I've changed the arrow to blue because I've labeled the sulcus here. This is the collateral sulcus. And then this gyrus that's closest to the hippocampus is the perhippocampal gyrus. So as I said, your answer is number four. All right, that concludes case number 40 here, the fourth set of the FAST 10 neuroradiology cases. Hopefully these are going to get you all the way to the finish line for preparing for your exams. Thanks for tuning in today. We're going to have two more videos with 20 more cases. So be sure to uh, tune back in and check out those cases. Thanks a lot.